Hello? Flight 527, maintain 4000, runway 8 kilo, position and hold. Officer needed for confined space permit. Flight 229, you're clear for departure. I need a robot, I hope. 150 bucks. I invented a rocket, Dad. Yeah, yeah. It's not the greatest invention, but it's okay. What did Mission Control say? Uh, I don't know. Let's just go. Are you there? ready for takeoff. Whatever. You're a great inventor and all, but next time, make seatbelts to go with it. Now who doesn't love steam trains? Burning coal, burning wood, boiling water to make steam. And all that pressurized steam puts the whole thing into motion. Locomotion. The first trains were pulled by mules or horses. Actual horsepower. But once steam technology got going, horses began to be replaced. I guess you could say steam power wasn't horsing around anymore. <laughs> Sorry. But the earliest steam locomotives weren't that impressive. The open cars allowed hot ash from the smokestacks to land on passengers. Very rich passengers, I might add. The next thing you know, men's expensive hats and women's fancy hairdos were going up in flames. One of the first American steam locomotives even lost a race with a horse. But the power of steam was undeniable. And with the United States expanding west throughout the 1800s, there was plenty of room to lay down track. Oh, one more thing. Ever wonder what that piece on the front of some trains is? Anyone? Yes, good. It's called a cow catcher. When trains started steaming along, sometimes animals would block the tracks. Entire herds of animals sometimes. Now, you know a train with a full head of steam was a very hard thing to stop, right? With a cow catcher, you didn't have to stop. Wait, the scene in the Polar Express movie when the herd of caribou was blocking the train tracks? You mean, in real life, that train would have just run right... Sheesh! <clears throat> what was the impact of the steam locomotive during westward expansion in the 1800s? The steam locomotive provided faster land transportation. I mean, that steam yes. locomotive sure was something else. Yes. That was an invention. Damn. You know, son, with any luck, yes. you could be a great inventor like your old dad here. Yep, I can see it happening. I mean, inventing this Astro. rocket that runs off used toilet paper is a great invention, but... Astro. Uh, great Scott, son! Why didn't you tell me? Uh, you could have at least invented light speed for this thing. I did. Oh, can I, can I? Boy, I tell you what, this uh, light speed sure is something else. Maybe some coffee will make me feel 
Oh, well, I... <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Fine, I'm fine. Um, yeah. Oh, what is this place? It's amazing. Yeah, so that, that light speed was great. Was there any way you could slow that down next time a little bit? Is that, what is that? Is that water? Water? Well, that reminds me of another great invention. The steamboat. Now, you do recall that steamboats were the bomb. Now, not only did steam power allow boats to travel against a river's current, but there was also the little matter of them exploding often. But once steamboats became more reliable, they could be used widely to transport people and goods throughout the expanding United States of the 1800s. Enter Robert Fulton. Robert Fulton was an entrepreneur. You love that French accent. I'll say it again. Robert Fulton was an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is the person who puts up the money in order to put together resources needed to get something to the market. In other words, the entrepreneur isn't the inventor, just the person who has the money to put the invention together, produce it, and sell it. Think Shark Tank. Or not. Robert Fulton took the steamboat from a cool invention to actually something that would change the world and help the United States grow into a world power. The steamboat provided faster transportation, but not only that, it connected plantations in the southern United States to growing factories and industries in the northern United States. Goods like cotton and people could travel north against the mighty current of the Mississippi River to factories and cities in the north. Not a planet, Dad. That's the sun. We gotta get out. Oh, not light speed again? <laughs> oh, 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 wow. Excuse me, buddy. You're in my seat. Whoa, how did he get in here? Is he with you? Look, you'll like this next invention because it, it's about cutting things. Glad Mr. Vader or Mr. Darth teleported out of here. How did he get here anyway? He's my friend. Your friend? Anyway. This planet looks like it's good for growing crops. It probably could use a mechanical reaper. Introducing the Mechanical Reaper. N no, no, not the Grim Reaper. The Mechanical Reaper. That Grim Reaper uses a farm tool called a scythe and a scythe is used to harvest or cut down crops like wheat, but by hand. Cutting down an entire field of crops by hand takes a long time and is tremendously exhausting work, but people had done it that way for hundreds of years. Hey, maybe that's why the Grim Reaper is so skinny. Maybe not. I, anyway, farmers could only plant but so many acres of crops. I mean, if you plant too much, you'd never get it all cut down and harvested in time. Cyrus McCormick and an enslaved man named Joe Anderson invented a new kind of crop cutter called the Mechanical Reaper. An inventor is a person who is the first to think of something. McCormick and Anderson invented the Mechanical Reaper in 1834, but did not sell one until 1840. And no, Joe Anderson, the enslaved man, never made a penny from this invention. It is said that McCormick, while selling the Mechanical Reaper, offered a never heard before guarantee 
and it went something like this. If you're not absolutely satisfied, bring it back. With the ability to be pulled by horses, mules, and uh, camels? The Mechanical Reaper could cut down acres of crops in no time flat. The Mechanical Reaper increased the productivity of the American farmer. Sure is quiet out here. It gives me a chance to think about all those great inventions like the steam locomotive and the steamboat and the uh, mechanical reaper. You know, son, I, I do like your rocket that runs off toilet paper. Used toilet paper, that is. I'm very proud of this. It's a really good job. Hey, looks like uh, your friend. Whoa! Left his doohickey behind. Uh, did your ship have a lost bound? Do you see anything out there? What, Dad? It looks like we're flying through cotton. Cotton? That makes me think of one last invention. The cotton chain. People have known for a long time about the value of cotton for making fabrics and cloth. But raw cotton was full of seeds, and the work required to take the seeds out of the raw cotton was intense. It took an entire day to take the seeds out of only one pound of cotton. It was so slow and so time-consuming that planting cotton just wasn't worth the time. But that changed in 1793 when an inventor named Eli Whitney invented the cotton engine, better known as the cotton gin. By the 1800s, the cotton gin had changed agriculture throughout the United States. With a cotton gin, acres and acres and acres more of cotton could be planted, picked, cleaned of its seeds, and sold. For big plantation owners, the timing was perfect as more and more land became available in the West as the United States expanded. I mean, why do you think so many people settled in Texas when Mexico offered all that land? Yes, they were coming to grow cotton. Well, I guess you know it wasn't the plantation owners doing the planting and growing of cotton. It was the work of enslaved people. The cotton gin was so effective that one enslaved person using a cotton gin could process the amount of cotton that it used to take 50 to 100 people to do. So now you need less enslaved people, right? Is the cotton gin going to be able to deliver a knockout blow to slavery? No. In fact, the cotton gin more than doubled the demand for enslaved workers. All that new land available in the growing United States meant millions more acres of cotton could be planted. Soon, the southern United States was producing 75% or three-fourths of the world's cotton. By 1836, more than $600 million Almost half of the economic activity in the United States came directly or indirectly from cotton production. By 1860, enslaved people were valued at $3 billion. That's $93 billion in today's money. Their value was more than all other United States industries combined. Why were enslaved workers so valuable? That's right, class. Cotton. The invention of Eli Whitney's cotton gin brought about some of the cruelest and most vicious days of slavery in the United States of America. The cotton gin, invented by Eli Whitney, increased cotton production and increased the need for slave labor.
those problems down there on Earth makes me just want to stay up here. Well, staying up here, yeah, that'd be nice. But we gotta go back to Earth, because we can make things better. It's been a rough past, but knowing about it sure will help. Son, I really am proud of you. Jumping Jehoshaphat! What planet is that? That's Earth, Dad. Oh, that's where we live? Son, take us home.